Let's talk about code reviews. What is the purpose of a code review? I always think of it as a tool for learning, uh, synchronization, and knowledge transfer. Um, because, you know, you might get your most inexperienced person, you got your most experienced person looking at the same thing, and somebody's going to learn something from that, whether it be the experienced person or non-experienced person, because it might be a different angle of approaching the problem. Um, it might be somebody not knowing that there's been a standard in place. It, it could be a plethora of... It, 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 it opens a dialogue and a forum for people to discuss around something technical. There's a couple different ways you can do a code review. Can you talk about how code reviews can be done and maybe the pros and cons of it? Yeah, so uh, the two kinds of code reviews that I'm aware of is there's a formal code review and then there's the informal code review. Uh, the formal code review really takes place in... Um, in the form of a meeting and again it's very formal you're invited you're going to present you have this much time to talk through like it's very rigid um but for certain places that's beneficial because what you could do is you know you're putting yourself out there on display you're trying to show your best work and your worst work for um it's really for critique and criticism and just better understanding, right? So again, you're having a dialogue around, you're creating a, a venue to have a dialogue around your code. And and nobody's like, uh, shies away from it at all. Nobody's above the code review. Yeah, like, every, everyone's got to do it yep. in some fashion. Yeah, one of our developers, they were talking about it and it was a little bit more open forum and people just showed like things that they were unsure of which is another way to do it. But again, you have that, you know, it's going to happen between 10 and 11 and be, be here, be square and I heard, I heard one of our developers, because we do this, one of our teams does, actually a couple of our teams do this, this formal code review every morning. It's like 30 minutes. They do it differently though. Heavily time boxed. How do they do it differently? Um, so it's not a single person presenting. They're literally just looking at all the changes since the previous day. Agno well, so one team does it agnostic of who did it. So it's kind of an anonymized code review and they're just checking through all the code. But you can tell who did it. Cause the check, I mean, at the some check, point yeah. there's a question and then the person, the developer is going to speak yeah. up and talk to what they did. Um, the other team, they are presenting round Robin. So everybody has a day of presenting and then they go through person by person, you know, just ripping through the files and just kind of going through it that way. But one of the developers who, who attends, I, I think the, the latter of that, he said, the code review gives me just the right level of anxiety to be just a little bit more thoughtful with what I check in. Right, because you're, it's going to be presented in a yeah. forum, right? That's not that be it shown. gave him like debilitating anxiety, but it it's like, hey, this people are going to see this. Like, yeah. I'm going to step up on my game here. Yeah, it's like I got people coming over now. I got to clean. I got to clean up my house. Like, yeah, that it. So it, he said it in a, a kind of a jokingly. Um, Joke, a joking way, but there was some truth behind like, yeah, the, yeah, hey, this gives me a little bit of anxiety, but it's a good thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then the informal code review. Yeah. So the informal code review is more of like a request. So anybody that's used GitHub, this is a typical like right part of your pull request. You're going to have a couple of reviewers or somebody has to look at it and approve it before it can get pulled into the, the main, the master branch. But yeah, so that's an informal one. So it is, you know, it's generally open to a uh a group of people sometimes it might be the entire team might be anybody that's access to the repository um people go through it um they might accept it or reject it add comments to the files or to the lines of change and then that's kind of you know where they take it and then yeah where, where that one fails is when you're not using git and you don't use a pull request but it's just a hey i checked in here are my code reviews. I tend to see those code reviews just pile up and never get looked at. But yeah, but like, we use it so much. So, so this is to a Git versus T. So we're using TFS. Yeah, which we should be moving to Git hopefully soon. Soon. So what you can do is you can uh, ask for a code review on a shelf set, which is equivalent in Git as a stash. Now stashes in Git are. Um, Local, to your local repository, not to the server repository. 
TFS, the shelf set is on a server repository that people can get access to. So that's kind of the equivalent of like a pull request. Now you could do it in a same, similar structure, but where Git is so much better is you can do as many commits as you want. And then once you're ready to like finish it and commit it, you can ask for that pull request. And then you see all changes in, um, you can just see all the changes in aggregate of like, what is the final result? Where TFS, it's more of a check-in by check-in basis or shelf set by shelf you, set. You might be and reviewing only, something that's not doesn't even, matter doesn't anymore. Doesn't even matter anymore, yeah. yeah. And that's kind of where my teams have, you know, they're trying to do both of, okay, instead of us looking at it change set by change set, we're gonna look at the previous day's changes because if somebody made several iterations, several check-ins, which my team is, they're used to doing small check-ins because, you know, who knows when they're going to break the code next. Yeah. Um, and yeah, there, there's stuff that doesn't, it's irrelevant. So is there like a superior form of code review? No. Just depends on what works for your team? Well, I mean, yeah, it, it, one is it is for sure depends on the team, but I think there's always a lacking in code review. And because the the biggest fallback on code review is they're only going to show you what's changed, not the impact of the rest of the system. Uh, elaborate on that. I think I know where you're going with this, but. Yeah. So um, like, let's say that you, let's go back to our calculator, right? You, you did uh, your A and B and then now you added a C. Okay. Well, your unit test pass, it's fine, but adding that C fundamentally changes how the rest of the application works. You don't get that scope because you only see like, oh, it changed one method big whoop it works pass test pass sure push it along um or something might cause a memory leak because now you're not disposing it properly or something like that yeah so code reviews are good for what has changed but it's not it it's not the same as doing like an actual like system review so when does that when should that like i've never i mean I don't think I've ever seen anybody do that, like a comprehensive system review at any regular interval. What does that look like? Yeah, that I've never seen it either. And I would advocate for, you know, that's probably should just be part of your annual. So like the, the question I got, I guess, is not when do you do that, but when do you do your system cleanup in the first place? Yeah, how do you, right? do, how, how do you identify debt? your technical yeah. debt? How do you handle things like that, you know, do you just deal with it as, as a bug by bug basis? Cause at some point, you know, you're going to refactor stuff and things are going to be obsolete and you need to kind of, you know, chop off the things that are unnecessary. Yeah. We're kind of at that point now where the amount of tech that we have is, is to the point where we need to like stop, reevaluate, chop off all the low hanging yeah. fruit that we don't need. So you're not going to get that in a code review. Right. Necessarily. And, and that would typically be the role of like a... Probably an architect. There are certain tools that can be used, but they're kind of used on a class basis. Um, like what? I know in Visual Studio, there is uh, the code analysis tool. And one oh, of the yeah. things that's in there is um, there's a thing in there that essentially can highlight the code that is or is not accessible. Um, usually you use it... For, uh, so if you're doing unit testing, it's over code coverage, right? What is or is not accessible. And you could use that as a tool to kind of figure out what's irrelevant yeah um, it's not going to be perfect but it's something that you can do yeah it can like sniff out hey this function is not called get right. rid of it yeah. right that's cool and i i i would suspect as um machine learning gets deeper and deeper integrated into visual studio that type of analysis will probably just be something you can push a button and get a hey these are the things that i think you could yeah refactor yeah resharper is another uh thing that or code made is another one of just like yeah. get rid of all the variables that aren't used anymore or That's whatever cool. it is. So cool. 